Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Running Reimagined. Sorry for the late start. For those of you that don't know, my name is Dylan Hopper. Uh, we have a live morning show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I'm so excited about today's uh, show because it's all about kind of two different uh, things that came up due to questions of the day that come out every single day on the Running Reimagined page. And yesterday was, what was the single biggest issue that you have in your running or overcoming in, with your running and your training? Um, and the, the two co most common things that came up was just getting out the door and then dealing with the internal battle between kind of your mind and your brain and your thoughts uh, and your brain telling you to quit once you reach a certain point. So that's what this uh, episode, the show is all going to be about. So I'm really excited uh, for that. Um, just so you guys know, uh, Running Reimagined is now on Facebook. It's also on Twitter um, and it's also on YouTube. All these shows are reposted on YouTube as well. So you can be able to check those out. Um, really cool. We have set up a link uh, that I've actually pinned to the description of this video. And what it is, you can click on it and you can actually schedule a 20 minute call uh, with me and hopefully I'll be able to answer any running question that you might have. If you want to talk about your 2018 coming up here, things uh, that maybe you want to do to set yourself up for maybe a specific race, whether it's your first half marathon, first 5k, 10k marathon, whatever, I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, so feel free to click on that link. You can schedule a call. Uh, I tried to make myself as available as possible. Um, especially understanding the different time zones. So uh, hopefully there's a time that will work for you uh, and then we can be able to have a, have a call and talk. So yeah, so that's kind of what I uh, have today going on. So excited about Running Reimagined being on Instagram and, and Twitter and trying to expand from uh, just Facebook. So yeah, so let me get into this real quick. I'm going to go on to I have my computer right here so I can be able to see the actual live feed and see comments that come in. Uh, one thing that I, I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share this to my personal page so then hopefully more people can be able to see this. The way Facebook's algorithm works, um, not everyone sees it. So 11,000 people might follow this page, but it, it limits the amount of people that actually get to see it. So the more likes and shares, more people actually get to see what's going on. Otherwise, they don't get to see this. So this show is very similar today to Monday's show, which was answering a question for a running reimagining follower who had uh, struggles dealing with the negative thoughts that went through her head while she was running. And her uh, problem that she had was within the first couple miles. It was like, uh, it's like when you go out for that run and you just don't feel good within the first couple miles, but then once you break through that, then you just feel in that rhythm and you can start to feel kind of the endorphins coming through and then you just feel good. So that was the thing that she was struggling with was just the negative thoughts that popped up within the first three miles. So today's episode is going to be pretty similar to that. There's going to be a lot of uh, crossover between tips only because your brain still works in the same way. And so, uh, I kind of wanted to attack this in two different parts. So the first uh, thing that had come up on the question of the day of what was your biggest, you know, single most biggest struggle was uh, just getting out, getting out the door. Um, and so I kind of wanted to talk about this in terms of if you think about it, uh, you only have so much willpower throughout the day. And so I like to think about it as like a jar of willpower and as you start to push yourself to do those things that you don't necessarily want to do, um, as you push yourself to do those things you don't necessarily want to do, uh, that jar of willpower gets gets lower and lower. The, the more that you're able to do it though, the more you're going to have in that jar. So for running, just getting out the door, a lot of times we struggle with it because uh, we build it up in our head and we have that conversation that goes back and forth. So what one thing that I think um, that can help you is to remove the resistance. I've talked about this before, but anytime you're trying to create a, a pattern or a habit in anything is really when you want to uh, remove the resistance, make it as easy as possible because 
your brain doesn't want to do work. Your brain will, is a, it's a survival mechanism. It's going to do whatever is the easiest thing possible to get done. So what you're going to do is you're going to remove the resistance. Um, and so what does that mean? So first of all, uh, if you only have so much kind of willpower throughout the day before that just starts to run down, if you wait until later in the day to do your run, so if you wait until you get home, wait until you take care of the kids, and then after that, then you say you're going to go for the run, a lot of times it's probably not going to happen because of all the things that you've done throughout the day. So if you can be able to schedule your run earlier in the day, it's going to be e- uh, much easier uh, to be able to get out there and do it uh, because you're not thinking about it as much. You're, maybe you wake up, you're motivated, you tell yourself you're going to do it. Um, the other things that you can do, uh, especially if it's just getting out of bed in the morning and getting up a little bit earlier to go for your run, when you're in your bed and you're comfortable and you're sleeping, that is the most comfortable you're going to be throughout the entire day. When you first wake up and you're just, you're basically just laying there like a baby, like you're warm, there's no reason for you to get out of that and your brain is telling you there's no reason for you to get out of that because that is very, very comfortable for you. So what you can do is you can set your, don't have your alarm clock maybe right next to your bed or don't have your phone, if you use your phone, right next to your bed. Have it across the room So when it goes off in the morning, you have to physically get up out of bed and go over and do this. Um, I get up pretty early when I get ready for these morning running shows. And that's one thing that helped me is is if I set my alarm and I put it across the room, I actually have to get up and walk across the way. Just that process of getting up and walking out, then all of a sudden... um, it, it breaks up that pattern, and then I'm thinking about what I'm doing next, and I'm not thinking about going back to the bed. So if you could do that, then to kind of further that, uh, especially if you want to be able to go wake up and run, kind of move around and run first thing in the morning, have your running shoes and your running clothes right next to where that wherever that alarm is. So for example, if I want to wake up really early on Sunday because I know I have a busy day, and but I want to get in my long run, so I have to wake up early to do it, I might put my phone, which I use as my alarm, I might literally put it inside my running shoes with my running clothes right next to it. So I get up, I have to walk across the room, and then it's another trigger that's right there, and it just makes the whole process smooth. And that's really what you're trying to do, is remove any resistance that might uh, stop or inhibit you from you know, getting out the door. So um, I hope that is kind of some things that you can be able to fit kind of into your lifestyle uh, that will help you get kind of get out the door. I think that's kind of part one of answering this question. Um, again, kind of recapping, we're going over kind of the two uh, most common things that came up on the question of the day yesterday, which is what is the single most uh, or the single greatest thing that you struggle with uh, within running. And it was getting out the door and then at some point in your run, your brain telling you to quit or telling you to stop. So that is kind of part one of this. Um, part two, and again, I love this. This is going to tie a lot into the the running show that we did on Monday where we helped someone kind of overcome their negative thoughts uh, throughout the run. Uh, your brain, like I had said before, it's a survival mechanism. It's going to, it's, once you reach a certain level of discomfort, it's going to try to tell you to stop because it doesn't, its job is not to get you hurt. The problem with that is that we're no longer cavemen where we need to worry about being eaten by lions or worry about being attacked by this or that. We, you know, if if we're very fortunate, we have houses over you know our head. We don't. If we walk outside, we don't have to worry about being attacked by an animal. So there's a, there's a lot of things that we don't have to worry about, but our brain is still trained to believe and think. Um, and one thing that I had talked about on Monday is your brain can't tell the difference between what is true and false. And so there's two different examples. One example I had used on Monday, which was the thought of the lemon. Or if you think about your favorite food or your favorite restaurant that you like to go to, if you think about walking into that restaurant and then sitting down and then then putting that favorite meal right in front of your face, all of a sudden your mouth is going to start to water. Like it's it's a trigger and it's... uh, 
you're you're thinking about this you're not actually there so it's not actually real or if you think about a lemon in front of you and then you think about biting into that lemon and all those juices squirting running through your mouth just thinking about it is going to trigger your mouth to water um but it's not actually there it's not actually real the other one that i had just heard which i think is kind of fun is that in your head tell yourself I want, I want you to yell it as loud as you possibly can in your head. You don't have to do this outside, or out, out loud. But in your head, yell, I love running. I love running. Like, just yell it in your head as loud as you possibly can. All right, now tell, do it again. Do that same thing again, but just say, you know, I love running. But just in a normal tone of voice in your head. So what the difference is in that is that we actually can't control volume in our inner thoughts because they're not real. We can only con control tone and pitch, but we can't actually control volume. And you can go back and forth and you can think about this as you're doing it. Uh, it it's really weird, but we can't actually raise that voice. We can raise the tone of the voice, but we can't actually raise that voice. Um, hey, Jordan, how you doing? Uh, so... Having that being, you know, being true, while you're going through your run and as your that voice pops up in your head telling you to quit, one thing to to think about first of all before I go into that, there's a difference that you need to understand between being um, in pain, in in mental pain, and then actually being injured. Um, just as there's a difference between being sore and being injured, is that this that difference between you can push through and you're fine and if you push through, you're going to get more hurt. So understand that it's your body. You understand it more than anybody else. Uh, and so it's important to really pay attention to those cues because if you're going through some sort of physical pain that you feel is an actual injury, then yes, maybe you should stop and quit. But I'm talking about that mental uh, block that just pops up and wants people, tells people to quit over and over again. Uh, there's a few different things that you can do with this. Um, because our brains can't tell the difference between what is true and false, you can create a, a kind of a mantra or a motivation or a, an affirmation, sorry, kind of in your head. And it works really well in running because in running, we're so much in rhythm, right? We're, you can feel when, when you're running really, really well, you can feel that rhythm and that pace. And so there's the, if you can come up with one or two sentences that are really, really empowering to you and say them, short sentences and say them over and over and over and you can say them as you go into each stride, that is going to be, it's going to get within that rhythm of your body and it's going to help you overcome that moment that popped into your head that said, you know, I need to quit. The other thing that, that comes up is that with, as you go through your running career and, and different phases, the, as you go through, like, say, the phase one, the early phase of maybe, like, just getting into running, you're going to have the same arguments pop into your head over and over and over. So these, these thoughts of telling you to quit, usually it's, you know, I, I, sh I should quit or I want to quit. And then you're going to name X, Y, and Z, you know, reasons why you should quit. Well, it's going to be the same argument every single time. So what you can do is you can cre get a running journal and write down what the what the negative thought was and then or why, you know, you should quit and then write down x, y and z, write down those reasons and then you're going to put an argument right next to it and you're going to write down the first thought that pops up because uh, like Tony Robbins has said, who's one of the the best motivational speakers, personal development coaches, uh, in the world, you don't always have control of your first thought, but you always have control of your second. So if that's true, that first thought is going to be, you know, I want to quit. Then what you're going to do is you're going to create an argument right next to it for every single reason why that is BS, why that is false. Um, and so when it pops up on your run, you're prepared. You have prepared statements for exactly what to say. So then it's going to trigger in your brain and you're going to say, no, that's BS because, you know, I've run this distance before. I've run further than this. I've run faster than this. You know, X, Y, and Z reasons for why that is false. And all of a sudden that's going to turn that whole, whole mindset around because as I think we've all felt before, 
we can go through those moments of doubt or those moments of, you know, wanting to quit. But once we get through it, once we get, you know, a couple minutes past that, all of a sudden we can be feeling on top of the world again. So it's just battling those moments and you're never going to fully overcome any of it. It's always like those moments are always going to be there. Like I had talked about different during the different phases of your career and different phases of running. It still pops up in my mind even after, you know, everything I've already been through between, you know, running, um, it still pops up in my head. Even, even from when I started to where I am now, those doubts still pop up. And so they're always going to be there. So it's just how you deal with it, you know, is really up to you. And that's how, what's going to be able to turn kind of your mindset around. Uh, kind of the next tip that I have to overcoming this, uh, initial, um, you know, self doubt or what comes into your head and tells you yourself to quit is to really have a goal and and understand your why. If you have a powerful enough why, if you read about um, some of these guys that do some of these crazy ultras, ultra runs, and you know, they're really successful at it and what drives them to get to the finish line, their, their why is so powerful that it doesn't matter what gets in their way, they're going to get to the finish line. So if you can have a why that is really strong, really emotional, really passionate, then it's going to help battle through that those moments of self-doubt. And then also I found that if you have a goal, so if you have a goal to run a marathon, if you have a goal to run a half marathon, uh, just to get to know that you're shooting for something and that what you're doing in this moment as training is going to help get you there, that can also kind of spur you to move past those moments of self-doubt. Um, and kind of the last one is, uh, this was more as those negative thoughts come up. Again, this is something that I had talked about on Monday, but it's really to, to keep yourself in your box. Uh, my dad, who had just completed his first Ironman uh, up in Ironman Canada, up in Whistler, uh, one thing that helped him was to keep himself in this box. So the, an Ironman obviously is a super long endurance race uh, and you can't think about everything that you have coming, but what you think about is just staying in, in your box. Uh, so just focusing on, and this box grows and shrinks as you feel, you know, what based on what you feel like throughout the race. So maybe at the beginning of the race you can feel you can see, you can, you can envision the first few miles. Then maybe you'll hit a certain point and that's when these moments of self doubt come in and your box is shrinking. But that's when you really just need to focus on those little cues that's going to help get you through. So maybe you're just focused on the next telephone pole or maybe you're just focused on, you know, doing the things that you need to to get you through like pumping your knees, getting the, 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 a nice gait going, or, or maybe you're focusing on relaxing your shoulders or relaxing your jaw muscles. Uh, all those things, just focusing on what's here and now and not focusing on what's out there can also help kind of get you through that. And like I said before, this is one of those things where it will get easier. The, the arguments will change, but it will get easier the more that you're able to beat and overcome uh, that those moments of self doubt that come in. So if you're able to beat it once, then beat it again and then beat it again and beat it again. That's when your the difference between the newer runners and the more experienced runners is their efficiency in recognizing those moments of self doubt and then turning it over and then moving on to, um, you know, something better because they've practiced it and they faced it over and over and over again. So, um, those are kind of two things that I had today to talk about. Again, they're based on uh, the question of the day yesterday. Um, the question of the day comes out every single day on the Running Reimagined page, and it could be something serious uh, or it could be something really goofy. So, um, you know, th- they're meant to be fun. They're meant to be able to learn, and I really think that we can all learn from each other. So uh, there's th- those certain ones that are deep and Im- uh, impactful. Um, then... Uh, I really think that if we all kind of share our stories and our tips and different things that help each other, you know, the newer runners can go through the page and read all those and then they can pick up different tips and tricks. Or, you know, maybe you're the more experienced runner, you can learn from maybe another more experienced runner. You're always an expert to someone, uh, no matter where you are in your career. So, um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. 
Um, that's kind of what I had for you today. Uh, for those of you that are racing this weekend, best of luck. Have a great time. Um, if you have any questions for me, please just put them in the comments or message me directly. If you want to set up a 20 minute uh, phone call with me to, we can actually talk and go over anything you want to in terms of running, whether it's setting you up for 2018 or uh, maybe your next goal. Feel free to set that up in the link in the in this description. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And if you don't mind, if you you know found this valuable to you and helpful, please like and share this. Um, that's you know the best way to to be able to get and you know more people to benefit from this. And and that's really what this is meant to be. So uh, have a great day, guys. Have a great weekend, and take care.